agenda out just I want to call to order the Tuesday, March 1st, 2016 meeting of the Strategic Planning Committee. Uh, if everyone would please rise, we will have the um, benediction and the pledge. Uh, tonight we'll be led by Councilman Benny Johnson. Bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we ask for your guidance tonight. Listen to the public for help us to resolve our issues with uh, our agenda tonight. Help us come to some Decisions that help everyone as best we possibly can. I want to pray for all of our men and women of our emergency responders, fire, police, EMS, as well as our military that may be in harm's way. Keep them safe and bring them home to their families. In God's name we pray. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. Okay, um, M Madam Secretary, please let the record show uh, at roll call all members of the committee are present. And a uh, little bit of housekeeping, we want to also recognize that beginning with this meeting and my understanding from uh, the full council chairman, uh, Randy Kluot, uh, Councilman Kluot, that um, henceforth Councilman Oliver Joseph will be a newly added member to the committee. If you all that don't know him, seated to my immediate right to your left. Uh, and he will be replacing on strategic, uh, on transportation, um, Dempsey Lambert, who was formerly on this committee. In other words, Dempsey will be moving to transportation, as I understand it, and uh, OJ is joining us. So welcome, uh, Councilman Joseph. Did you, want, did you want to say anything, OJ? I'm just glad to be here, Doc, like every other meeting. <laughs> okay. A little bit uh, more of, uh, of, house, uh, of, of housekeeping then. Uh, item number three is a public comment period, and uh, before we uh, just launch into that, um, we, we can do it as you know when we get to the item, uh, the only item on the agenda, item five this afternoon, the moratorium on new development. If you haven't already done so and you wish to speak tonight, it is your, your right and actually privilege uh, to do so. So please sign up with the secretary, that's Miss Jessica Mark Marcotte, sitting over here. Jessica, raise your hand. I have quite a few cards here, and I can see by the audience that we, we're going to have a, a good public participation, and that's, that's a real good positive thing. With that, then, we'll move into item number four, adoption of the February 2nd, 2016 uh, minutes. I'll, ad I'll attend, uh, entertain a motion. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Councilman Joseph, seconded by Councilman Lawler to accept the uh, February 2nd minutes. Any objections? <laughs> Hearing none, minutes are adopted. <laughs> item number five, moratorium on new development. Um, before uh, opening the, the public comment period on, on this and having a discussion with the, uh, the councilman and so forth, um, I'd like to make some prefacing remarks. Uh, many of you may have seen the original um, agenda and came out discussion of moratorium on new development. I've had that corrected in time for proper advertisement and so forth, so if you're confused about that, that's why it now says moratorium on new development. This is not only discussing, uh, a discussion item tonight, but it is uh, actionable if that is the will of this um, committee. Uh, the other change to the agenda at the last minute was Councilman Bill Dawson and Councilman Errol Lawla. I originally wanted their names in, in there to lead the discussion. It is those gentlemen who's, who specifically asked to place this on the agenda, which I'd like to make a comment about going forward to on this committee. Any councilman uh, on this committee that wants something on agenda I will not have any more of this business about placing versus setting things in agenda. If you come to me and you want something on our agenda, I will not only accept your right to uh, place it, I will set it on the agenda with one uh, caveat that those individuals, and I'm sure these two individuals tonight, be well prepared to discuss what it is they have in mind. That's not to say, as chairman, because I, I'm, I'm tasked with a a different job to remain impartial that I don't support it and I am allowed to discuss and you'll probably hear that and hopefully more times than not I won't have to vote um, um, uh, on, on these issues, especially some, something like what's going to happen tonight and, and I can tell that already by looking at how many people are out there in the audience, a moratorium. So um, prefacing remarks, why are we here tonight? Well I've got my ideas and I'm sure all of you have yours as well. 
I believe it's because we're to a point now in our parish where we can no longer continue to travel the road we're traveling, and we may be interested in taking a little a road a little less tra uh, traveled, at least temporarily, in order to fix some things. It is no secret that we have significant problems with an overburdened infrastructure. Our roads, our drainage, our sewer, even our schools are starting to have some problems, etc. And as a result, we have had, quite frankly, several decades now. This isn't just the fault of the current Planning and Zoning Commission of what I call mostly unbridled growth, meaning that things come in front of us, developers have um, satisfied the quote land development codes and any other laws and statutes that they're required to abide by, and we get approval, we get a development, the infrastructure falls further and further behind, we have a problem. Maybe time now then to take a deep breath, we'll see. I point to the examples of, only because it is our most current, as I said, it's not just their fault, but our most current commission. When one individual says, I didn't even know we had a master plan, another one has said in public, well, I know we've got one, but I'm not gonna be the first one to apply it, even though our planning director said you should do so, or at least consider, he didn't say you should do so, but he recommended, it's his job, that you might wanna turn it down based on language in that master plan, which talks about inadequate infrastructure as a reason to turn things, thing, things down. And yet others have said, more than one, I don't even believe we have the right to do it because we don't have discretionary authority. Everybody in this room knows I don't believe that. But the good news is we're gonna get an attorney general's opinion on that soon. So I'm very pleased with that and, I, and I've thanked in public before and I'll do it again, Mr. K uh, Kenny Matassa, our president, for asking for that, that opinion. So that's all been kind of problematic. And real quickly then going back to uh, uh, Mr. O'Neill Parrington, our legal counsel, I wanna thank him for being here tonight. He hasn't always been at these meetings, but we're going to be taking on some, not by his <laughs> going, he's looking at me, but sometimes there's, there's things where he's not needed. But we're going to be having some real tough discussions, not just on this. As you know, we're, we're taking on the land development code and alterations there. I don't know if it's coming to this committee or not, but I'm going to predict that I hope it does. Impact fees. And so he asked me, what is the purpose of the meeting? And I said, Mr. O Mr. Parenting, you need to ask the two individuals that are gonna lead the discussion, not Councilman Lawler and Councilman Dawson. I believe they've responded in kind and he has developed uh, with their ass assistance uh, um, right now behind the scenes, soon to be made ev evident, uh, a page discussing the moratorium, how it would be applied, and we'll get into the details of that shortly, and uh, who it will affect, who it won't affect, how long it will be for, so forth and, um, um, and so on. But there has to be a justification. And that justification, as I see it, and I'm really glad to see it in that uh, uh, proposed ordinance that we'll consider tonight, is the impact fee situation. And again, not to be picking on the Planning and Zoning Commission per se, but you, everybody knows that they were tasked, several of those and some other outsiders, to uh, be part of what we call the uh, Impact Fee Exploratory Subcommittee. That subcommittee has taken two years and we still don't have a recommendation, although I understand it's coming at our next meeting. However, I'll say this, I'm aware of what I read, in, at least in the media about it, and I continue to be disappointed that um, the task was to look at more than just roads. It's impact fees, plural, there's an S there. What other kind of fees? Well, we had a tax, ladies and gentlemen, remember it for recreation and it failed, the people voted it down. We have 16 parks. If we have five, 6,000 more rooftops coming here, and we have that many more children and so forth. Do we need another park? Uh, we're gonna be considering tomorrow night reinstatement of money for soccer fields at Lamar Dixon. Uh, that was all in the charge, I thought. In fact, in the spiral bound report to the council from that exploratory impact fee subcommittee, it was mentioned as a type of impact fee, but I think they, I'm not gonna say arbitrarily, for some reason decide to concentrate mostly on roads, and that's the recommendations they're bringing forward, but that's not considered. Other of my council colleagues have said, well, Doc, what about correctional facilities? That was in their list as well. N need not tell you, we recently passed a tax on juvenile detention. You people were gracious, uh, well, you weren't gracious enough. Actually, we did that without your permission because state law re you know, allows that uh, development of a tax without a vote of the people. But now I'm hearing, well, what about the adult jail? Well, what about it? What about libraries? What about fire? 
oh, we can't have impact fees for fire out here because uh, we're already taxing the people with ad valorem tax and sales tax. Well, yes, we can. Other municipalities, other parishes, other counties across the United States do so. Because remember, this is not a tax, it's a fee. And it has to do with paying a one time at the beginning for the impact you make. And you will use our libraries, you will use our fire, you will use our law enforcement, you will use our roads, you will use our drainage, et cetera. So I would like to see that greatly expanded, and therefore I don't think we're anywhere close to getting impact fees in, at least not in my mind. We, and also I understand that some of the, the values that the committee came up with are anywhere from a quarter to a half the amount that was recommended by a third party that we hired to study this over 10 years ago. That was back in 2006. So I hope it comes to our committee. If it don't, I'll abide by wherever it goes through with the full council, stays in finance, whatever. But I think we, we have to study it. So that's the reason. We can't do this tomorrow. But I'm glad to see that we're now very, very interested in doing something. So I believe in Mr. Parrington's ordinance, it clearly says the reason for this six-month moratorium, if it's voted upon tonight, okay, is to give us time to put at least impact fees in, if not starting to address the master plan. Remember I said <coughs> earlier the PNC feels like it's outdated, whether it is or not, we're not following it for sure, but it's out there, and I believe it needs tweaking as well. It certainly needs to be updated relative to figures, okay? But so there's, there's, there's substantial reason out there. So that's really what all I want to say about the... Um, um, uh, the setup as to why we're here. And uh, with that, I would charge you again, anybody that wants to uh, publicly speak on this item, it's going to be one and one only, moratorium, new development. It is actionable if it's the pleasure of this committee, or we could do nothing. We'll see what's going to happen. All right? I'll charge the speakers with three minutes. Okay? If you, if you tardy a little bit, I'm not going to be rude and ask you to just sit right down, but I'm not going to let you go five minutes either, so I'd ask you to respect that. Our first speaker this afternoon is Mr. Paul Johnson, and I would ask you to state your name and also maybe where you live for the record and get an idea of what district you're from and so forth. Paul? My name is Paul Johnson. I live on Highway 621, 37438, about a half a mile from the intersection of 73 and 621. Uh, I'll be honest, I've been praying a lot sitting back there because I'm very angry. I'm extremely angry. You just have no clue how mad I am about a lot of things. I'm going to try to control that anger. I'm going to try to keep it under control so I don't let my emotions overrule my judgment. Uh, my anger goes way outside of what just the traffic is in my front yard. I get up in the mornings, and from about 6.30 to 6.45, I watch a parking lot in my front yard. I get out of my driveway between 6.30 and about 8 o'clock, only by the kindness of strangers. If nobody chooses to let me out, I don't get out. It is a solid wall of traffic. Now, when school's out, it's not quite so bad, but during school, it's horrendous. It really is. If there's an emergency, I have to get out of my yard. I'm stuck. If anybody wants to come to my house if it's an emergency, Doc talked about fire. If I have a fire in my house, let me tell you something. I will not look for anybody to respond to my house with any kind of timely manner because the traffic is not only one way solid, it's the other way solid. So it's just a nightmare, and it really is. But, you know, I have been to several of these different meetings where proposals have been brought forward for subdivisions, one of them directly behind me, one on a piece of property that we own in a different part of the parish, and we were promised with due diligence that no harm would come to us, that the committee that was passing these rights to build these subdivisions, whatever term you want to use, always had our interests at heart. I don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. I don't believe they had any of my, my interest at all. The property I own on, like, on Highway 42, my wife and I own together, we never had problems with water, ever. We went to the meeting, this has been several years ago, and they brought Renwood subdivision up for the agenda. I confronted him. I said, what are you going to do about the drainage? Because the property has a natural drainage that just meanders through it, goes up to Roy's, Roy's Ice House, the guy that used to own it, goes right up to the fence line, goes continues right across a natural ditch and goes right down in that canal bottom, and we never had a problem with water, ever. I could cut my grass, and it's 28 acres, and we'd bush hog it on a regular basis. Once a month, I could cut it. Last year, I cut it twice. You know why I cut it twice? Because when they built Renwood, after they promised me they would not affect the drainage or anything, I have a wall there now. I have no drainage to this property. I have to really slow down now. 
I spent this morning at a doctor's office. I spent this morning with a grandson who were there trying to save his leg today. And this is where it really gets emotional for me. The reason why this happened is because of a decision the parish made to allow Renwood to block my drainage that caused the problem that got my grandson hurt. You can turn me off or you can run me off, whatever you want to do. But let me tell you something right now. I get angry every time I think about it. I mean, I'm sitting here listening to a doctor talk about amputating him from the above the knee down, all because of a meeting that I sit in where they said Renwood would not hurt my property, wouldn't cause me any problems whatsoever. Okay, Mr. Johnson. It's flooded now, and my grandson is paying the price of it. If you want to know the details, call me. I'll sit down and talk to any of you. I'll tell you exactly what happened. But that's where the anger comes. I apologize. I, don't, I really don't mean to get mad, but it's hard not to. It's hard not to speak with emotion Paul, Paul, when things thank, happen. Thank you for your comments, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Our second uh, speaker this afternoon is Mr. Jeff Pettit. Thank you. Um, I live at 11329 Family Road. I'm in uh, Mr. Cagnolati's district, District 10. Um, several things that I would speak for in favor of a moratorium. One, we have a new commission, a, a PNZ commission coming in. We'll have at least five and possibly six new members. Uh, the Capital Area Region Planning Commission has offered to come down to Ascension and offer the state mandated training to all of these new commissioners. I think it would be crucial to have them have the uh, training mandated by law before they rule on any issues before them. Uh, that training is also available to anybody that wants to come. And uh, I think it would be beneficial, maybe helpful, um, enlightening for anybody that wants to come, council members, members of the public. Um, I'm going to be there again, but uh, uh, I always pick something up from it. The second, th uh, third thing is uh, this six-month moratorium, if approved, will allow time for review of the master plan. Per state law, it's supposed to be reviewed every three years. From what I can see in the record, we have not reviewed the master plan for the parish in the last four years of the past commission uh, when they've been serving. It's never been reviewed. I think it needs to be reviewed and allow for public input on that review. Uh, the fourth thing it would do is allow time for review of changes to how traffic and drainage studies are being done currently and how they are being paid for. I think that needs to be done. Mr. Compton has brought it before the PNZ Commission and the Council on how he would like to suggest changes being done where the parish selects the engineers that does the studies instead of the developers. But the developers still pay for it. Uh, I think that needs to be explored for further and settled by the Council. Next thing, take time to review and amend, if deemed necessary, the review process and the submittal process for new and amended plats in order to give our staff, our staff, Ascension Parish's paid staff, time to adequately and thoroughly review all the plats. They don't have that time at this point. I don't think it's been stated, it's been proven, they do not have the time. The last thing, or not the last thing, but one more thing. Just a few more seconds, Mr. Pettit. A few more seconds. I'd like to bring public safety into this equation. Uh, the school system, the medical community, uh, in a formal manner, because everything we do development-wise affects fire and, fire and police, sheriff, ambulances, the hospitals, and the school system directly in a formal manner, bring them into the discussion. The last thing is uh, impact fees, and I won't say any more about that, but for two years, nothing's happened. 
and I, I don't know how many dollars have been left on the table as a result of that. Okay, Mr. Bennett, thank you. Our next speaker this evening is Mr. Billy Goodwin. Thank you. I live at uh, 38261 Brown Road in Prairieville, Mr. Lawler's district. You can go ahead and write that address down because I'm going to need to see you. Uh, well, we had the entrance of a hidden farm disaster. That's at the end of Brown Road. And, you know, what I like to say about the parish is the growth needs to be smart. This influx of people for these contracting jobs created an expansion. But you're going to have an expand, contract, F. at the end of when they all turn their permanent jobs, you're not going to have all of these people here. Nobody's going to move to a parish that you can't get around and you can't move around. It's not going to be advantageous for somebody to move here for the schools when they start having problems. I want to say one other thing. People sitting on the boards have interest in businesses that benefit from their yes or no answers. So this is not only a moral conflict, this may be a legal conflict of interest, and it may be needed to be investigated. That's all I have to say for tonight. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Goodwin. Catherine Guppelt. Thank you and good evening. I want to thank the members of the uh, committee for having the political courage to have this discussion. Growth for the sake of growth has been a disaster for our parish. The master plan adopted in 1998 with substantial public input has largely been ignored. Yes, for those unbelievers who think we have no master plan, look at Appendix 3 in the Unified Land Development Code. The infrastructure deficit is past catching up. The tax dollars collected from new residents is never enough to provide the services required. Just a few statistics. In 2000, there were 998 lots approved for development with 500 acres. 2005, 1,311 lots approved using 449 acres. In 2010, 242 lots using 190 acres. And in 2015, 2,314 lots approved with 1,437 acres. Will a moratorium help? It cannot solve the consequences of our past decisions, but it can help as we go forward. Only if we update and apply the master plan and decisions going forward and adopt impact fees to help mitigate the cost of infrastructure can we hope to minimize the impact of future development and see positive benefits for a moratorium. Is it legal? Yes, other communities have done it. Look at Tammany, St. Tammany Parish. Will it stop growth and shut down business? No. Lots approved continue being developed. We have sufficient lots approved, over 6,000, to keep contractors, developers, and supporting businesses working for years to come. This moratorium and discussion is about a pause in accepting new applications for development. You are considering at least six months. Subdivision development has been the biggest concern. Continue accepting applications for family partitions, individual residential homes, and commercial development. I have a little statistic here for you, gentlemen. Family partitions account for 440 approved lots out of 12,962 in the last 15 years since 2000. That's 3%. We need to continue to encourage business to develop in Ascension Parish, buy local, and keep our tax dollars in Ascension. Is there any good reason for this, that this cannot be done? I can only see one. The lack of political will on the part of our elected officials to address the problems. This is not the first discussion related to a moratorium. The last vote ended one vote shy of approval. Please move this out of committee. Let's give the parish council another opportunity to work towards solutions and be proactive. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Guppleton. Thank you for being on time. Um, Ms. Martha Johnson. Good evening. Martha Johnson, I live on Highway 621. I married the passionate Paul there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, 
The reason why I'm here is unlike Paul, it takes me forever to get out onto Highway 621. We were told years ago that 621 will be three-laned all the way up to what is now the, uh, the school right there, that primary school. Uh, we were also told that whenever they started developing the hollows at Dutchtown that, hey, water flows uphill. You know, parish engineers okayed it. I'm also speaking for Mr. Terry Cooper, who couldn't be here because he has suffered a hearing loss or, or an ear infection. But he took these pictures all, during the last rainstorm. Do I need to press a button? Oh, there it is. Is that right or is that upside down? That's Highway 621 up here. It shows the water going way out over the ditch. That's my yard. That's his yard. This is going to the back. They cleared out all this land back in the back, and they, they plugged up the drainage back there with fallen trees, so now we don't drain at all. We're going underwater. Here's the side view looking back at my house. It's just water after water. I'm sure I'm not the only one in this parish that suffers from, you know, back up. This is Tony Bacala's house on the back going up into his house. Here's the side of Terry Cooper's facing Tony Bacala. Even Tony Bacala is going underwater. Um, I asked for a moratorium. We need to get it under control. Like I said, we had an emergency. We couldn't even get out of our driveway. It took us forever. My son had burglar alarm go off. We had to wait. It literally took us 30 minutes to get to his house. He lives over at the parks off of uh, Corner View Road because of the traffic. Uh, if you go down Highway 73, oh God, if, you, if school's going on or a ball game, forget it. You might as well figure out some other way to go. Uh, yes, there should be some kind of fee or something to help slow down the growth or, or, or better manage it. You know, it, it's not gonna be easy, but I know y'all can work it out. Thank you. Um, thank you, Ms. Johnson. Uh, our next speaker will be John R. Widden. Good evening. I, I live at 37243 Longwood Avenue, and one of the reasons I want to speak uh, for the moratorium is we endured somewhere between three and four years of getting Highway 73 repaired and adding that middle turn lane which now a lot of drivers think, uh, think that that's a passing lane. Mm -hmm. When the traffic is backed up, they think it's perfectly fine to whip out into that lane and just go around the others no matter what's going on. Uh, while this was being done on 73, I wound up with two cracked windshields, multiple flat tires, and all of the other th you know, stress and strain that goes with that development. And as an example on that, on a typical weekday morning, uh, if you're trying to get to the interstate, we're over there by St. John's Church. You pull out, you wait, and it takes from that period 20 minutes to get from there to the interstate to get on the interstate to go wherever you need to go. If you're in a hurry, you need to turn left and go up Airline Highway. So that's one of the things that I think we need to do as far as declaring a moratorium. Because I think we're right now in a situation where we're trying to drive 100 miles an hour and not stopping for any stop signs, red lights, or whatever, because we want to get more property built and get those taxes on the books. Uh, the other thing is uh, the way we're talking about going now, the population of this parish is what now, over 120,000 or something to that nature, and we're going to be at 200,000 here if we're not careful. And at some point in time, there's an issue of quality of life that's involved. And the way I see that, the way our situation is now, it's grow, grow, grow. And I think we need to go slow, slow, slow. It ain't the end of the world if we don't get another thousand uh, lots or developments done in the next six months. So please, please, please vote for a moratorium. And let's take at least six months or better to put the brakes on and review the situation and see what kind of positive changes we can make to make sure that the things that happen in the future will be better for everyone living in this parish. 
and I thank you for the time and appreciate it. And I know you have a job that's uh, very, very, very uh, sometimes probably, uh, you know, disappointing and all. But we do appreciate your hard work. And I also want to thank the new council members that are here and hopefully give us some new insight on how we're doing and what we need to do better. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Whitney. Um, Mr. Robert Nance. And while Bob's coming up here, let me embarrass him a little bit. Um, most of you people may not know this, maybe some of you do. Four years ago, before I was elected uh, the, the District 4 Councilman, I served with Mr. Nance on the Planning and Zoning Commission. So, Bob, welcome back, uh, Cotter, and really looking forward to hearing your comments this evening, sir. Well, my uh, comments are rather <coughs> sharp because everyone has said what I believe. We need to do the moratorium <laughs> to give our council time and also the Attorney General time to determine if we do, uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission does have discretionary powers. Uh, the impact fee, even if we have a moratorium, I think it, we still need to explore that, and I think it can be done within that six-month period if you have the right people working on it. Uh, forgot to tell you where I live. I live out in Pelican Point. I'm the, uh, the old folks part, and the, I'm the president of the HOA out there. And Highway 44 is a mess on that end. I know y'all have a mess on the north end too, but we've got two more subdivisions, huge subdivisions coming in on uh, 44 by the city of Gonzales. We have no control over that. Uh, and that's going to be, in addition to all the lots that uh, Catherine talked about, we've got, you know, about a thousand more lots in one subdivision and 300 and something in another one within the city of Gonzales. Plus, there's a new development on Church Point Road, about 150 lots. We can't stand any more approvals. And I realize this is going to slow the, some of the developers down, but there's still a lot of lots that you can build a lot of houses on. And I would... Uh, hope that y'all will send this to the council and they will vote in favor of a moratorium to give Ricky and, uh, and whomever decides to tackle the impact fee time to do it. It can be done with, with a lot shorter than two years if you have the right people. Uh, somebody made the comment maybe some <coughs> of the people that are in business shouldn't be on these committees. I would add to that I don't think anybody outside the parish ought to be on any of these committees. Uh, I'm going to say one thing about the northern part of the parish. I have two grandkids going to Prairieville Middle School, and if they have a, any kind of disaster out there, it would compound because there, there's not a good road going to it. There's uh, Henry Road, which goes from Highway 73 to the school. You cannot pass two school buses without hitting mirrors. And it was probably a paved game trail. That's the best I can figure out on it. That's all I got to say. Y'all go send the moratorium to the council, and if they don't have the guts to do it, then shame on them. Um, thank you, Bob, and I see you haven't lost um, a step. Uh, Miss Sharon Sanders. Good evening. I'm Sharon Sanders. I am supporting Dr. Satterley. I live in his area, and I support his objectives in this matter concerning impact fees and moratorium and growth. My husband, Will, and I have lived on White Oak Drive almost 20 years. My husband was unable to come tonight, so I'm reading his statement, and I agree with everything he says concerning these um, objectives. My name is Will Sanders, and we live on White Oak Drive in Prairieville. I was born near Donaldsonville. In my younger days, I worked at Matassa Motors, an SO service station. I also did contracting with my uncle, Wilbur Capello. I have worked more than 30 years in management positions in industrial construction and maintenance. I once owned my own business and I am familiar with construction and managing projects, development 
and Ascension Parish has been mismanaged for many years, especially in the north. Our roads cannot sustain the traffic and drainage and the continuing development at the current pace. My backyard becomes a lagoon after a heavy rain. Several of my neighbors have the same problem. It's time to take a close look on how development is being managed. A temporary moratorium on large subdivisions is not out of order and it is past due. We can do better if we plan better. For years, we put the cart before the horse, putting in subdivisions before improving roads, roads and other infrastructure. I understand the importance of impact fees. We have none in the unincorporated incorporated areas of the parish. Gonzales has impact fees for sewer. These help to build infrastructure so sorely needed. We need to take time to plan and take a short time to ponder and study the big picture of growth. So we urge you to be more concerned about the quality of life for current residents. Population influx slash density can put too much pressure on schools and roads, as well as sewage treatment and drainage. Air, air quality is very much affected with too many drivers and a lack of capacity on the roads, causing drivers to inch and crawl and stack up at intersections. Growth is wonderful as long as it's not a burden on the current residents citizens of the parish. And most importantly, it is time for local officials to put pressure on state delegations to improve airline highway, which of course is a state road, but it is one of the biggest bottlenecks in the parish during rush hour in the a.m. and the evening. There are a tremendous amount of commuters using airline highway. And I would like to throw out the wild idea of perhaps considering double decking of roads, which is done quite successfully in other places. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sanders. <clears throat> Our next speaker is Doug Hillensbeck. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Doug Hillensbeck. I live at 18061 Colored Broussard Road. Prairieville in uh, District 7. Uh, my councilman is Mr. Lawler, Aaron Lawler. Uh, I'm glad you're having a discussion on the moratorium, and uh, of course, I certainly support it, and, and I really appreciate Mr. Johnson's comment and how angry he is, and I'm angry as well. Uh, however, moratorium uh, is going to take a while. Is, is it the answer? I'm, I don't think so. I think it might help. I want to just quickly tell you, for some of you that's new on the council that might not know it, there are three types of traffic studies that are done for these developments. There is the parish study, the state study, and the area study. You will not see a traffic engineer work with a developer and come forth with a traffic study where it's done on an area basis. It'll only be done on a parish or a state basis traffic study. The reason why is they are antiquated, they are outdated, and they are the only thing that will pass. If, they are, if these are eliminated, and it can be done by council ordinance, that this parish will no longer accept uh, parish or state traffic studies and that these developers and these traffic engineers have to use the area traffic study, you're going to see a big change in growth in this parish. And also, these uh, traffic studies, the area traffic studies, when they're done, they must be done during rush hour traffic and when you've got school traffic going in to school in the mornings and letting out in the afternoons not during the summertime when there is no school school traffic. I supported impact fees when I was on the council in 2004-2007. And to piggyback another gentleman's comment, I'm going to tell you, 
I'm guessing it's probably in the neighborhood of $50 million that we've lost because impact fees were not implemented. You can do a lot of infrastructure with $50 million, especially getting moving up on lists and getting matching funds and what have you from other, uh, other governmental bodies. The last thing I want to talk about briefly is what's called a quid pro quo. And for those of you in the audience that don't understand that term, it was explained to me by a lawyer, and it's taught in Greek and Latin, and it's something for something. In the last four years, or I should say going back to when the previous planning commission was fired in 2011, and new members were seated on the planning commission, I want you to know of those new seven members, five of them served on a steering committee to elect Chris Lohr Parish president, okay? And the something for something that was obtained was Mr. Lohr got all these campaign donations to run for parish president, and they got their developments approved. Ms. Dillon, I want to you to summar summarize that, please. Okay, sir. summarize, and again, quid pro quo, if anyone wants to check me on the facts, I know what I'm talking about. I've studied the campaign finance reports. I know all of you got a tough job to do. Please, for once, do the right, right thing Thank for the people. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And um, I'd be remiss, and I did not mention, I, I talked about the service of um, Bob Nance, um, the, the speaker just now uh, was on this council in the past. Thank you for your service there, Mr. Hillensbeck, and also ran for office. I think that demonstrates his interest in our parish um, against Mr. Lawler, I guess it was. Yes. Is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Robin McCarley. Um, I live at 18537 Plantation Court Drive in Councilman Satterley's uh, district. And I'm here tonight because uh, much like uh, Bienville, whenever he discovered this parish 316 years ago, he found a fork in the Mississippi River. And I think tonight you are all sitting at that fork and you're gonna make a major decision that's gonna have a huge impact on Ascension Parish and the people who are here now and in the future. What I'd like to point out is that I feel that the reason why this is gonna be a historic decision if you indeed do move forward with the moratorium, which I support, is the following. I think this is about safety, safety, safety. And I'll give you three particular events. I think that we learned last Tuesday during the weather events that if you have a child such as mine who goes to Oak Grove Primary, and because of the ungirded growth in this community, that children are in trailers. We saw what happens when a tornado hits a trailer park in Convent, Louisiana. I'm glad that my child was home that day that the government officials had worked together, which I hope that you will be able to work together along with the indigenous tribes of this community, much like what Bienville did 316 years ago whenever he asked the Indians for some advice about what to do and how to find the fork in the river. Secondly, from a safety point of view, I think that we're looking at, you know, we just heard these comments from Ms. Johnson regarding the standing water. It's raining right now. I can hardly wait to go home and see where the water is next <laughs> to my house, Mr. <laughs> Bell's house. I'm really concerned about Zika virus, okay? We need to be very, very concerned about this. If we have all this standing water, temperatures start getting warmer, we're gonna have a massive problem on our hands. You need to be thinking about this moratorium very seriously. Third thing, this is a very sad point for me. My son had a very close friend who was killed on December of last year, Brennan Rue. And we found this out late one evening, and we had to wait till the next morning to tell my son before he got on the bus to go to Dutchtown High School. <coughs> there are now over 2,350 students attending a school that has trailers out back for them to go to. I think that if we had some infrastructure guided growth in this parish, and we would actually look carefully at what was going on, we would have road systems that actually could move people around, and we'd have shoulders to roads that maybe Brian, uh, Brennan Rube could have been on the side of instead of being struck by a vehicle. I think these are just three examples of the things that I can think of that really come to mind whenever it's about safety in this parish and about the infrastructure that's necessary to be able to support that. And I think it behooves us all if we can work with you and you can work with the rest of the members of the council to be able to move forward on this, to look at the moratorium carefully, and vote for it, and then to move forward also with his impact fees. 
because I think this is the only way that you're going to be able to develop such a rapidly developing parish as such as Ascension Parish. So tonight, I hope that your decision is as historic as Bienville's 316 years ago. Thank you. Thank you, Rob, and thank you for being on time. Um, and not to embarrass that speaker, Mr. McCarley is a neighbor and friend in my district living in the adjacent subdivision. Um, more importantly, he's a college professor, which is what I did for 35 years, and a distinguished one. Uh, he, he, he wasn't in the poultry department, but he's a distinguished chair. <laughs> trust, trust me, he knows what he's talking about. Um, that said, Ms. Mrs. Karen, is it Treachel? Treichel? Okay, um, let me look down my list here. Would that be Kyle? Welcome, sir. <coughs> Kyle Treachel. I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak here today. Uh, my name is Kyle Treachel. I live at 3285 Brown Road, at the end of Brown Road. Uh, weigh in on the issue of the rampant thought list development. As a lifelong resident of Ascension Parish, I've seen a lot of change in our community over the recent years. Some changes seem to offer the hope of improvement for our residents, upgrades to some roads, expansion, upgrades to our area schools, but something has gone wrong. A sense of uh, escape from the city offered by our rural community has been lost due to our roads Inability to move traffic volumes now required. So many new houses with two and three cars per roof, no new traffic arteries to serve them, or single effort to widen. A major road in Prairieville took almost six years and has managed only to create more pressure on the surrounding intersections. Highway 42 and Old Jefferson are dangerously gridlocked for three or more hours a day. I lived next to my property for most of my life. The water in the field back there came up only with major floods. Last year alone, it came up over four times. I don't know if they was trying to tell me that, uh, make me believe my land is sinking that much and not want me to think that uh, they can't keep up with the drainage issue, but now I might have to pay flood insurance and I don't really, see why this should ever been able to happen. Every square foot of concrete that's put, put down takes away from what the ground can absorb. Our sense of rural community values is gone. The people who our roads are named after have sold us out and our own property rights seem to be violated. The neighborhoods we bought our homes in have become choked driveways dead ending in the new construction. There's no downtown Prairieville, just endless strip malls full of vacant shops, failed businesses here and there, a bedroom community that has lost its own identity. I moved next to a cow pasture for a reason. I didn't move there because I wanted to smell my neighbor's roses. I moved out to four acres because that's where I wanted to be. That's what I like looking at. I understand growth is going to happen, but I don't think it should happen to the point where it's going to affect everybody's uh, value of living. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Treacle. Mr. Troy Carasioli. Good evening. My name is Troy Carasioli, and I live in Seven Oaks Subdivision off of Highway 73. I grew up in East Baton Rouge Parish, and I fled that parish because of the insane traffic problems that that parish created. And it was done by elected officials. I fled to Ascension Parish 16 years ago because the traffic in Ascension Parish was significantly better than that of East Baton Rouge Parish. That has dramatically changed for the worse in the past 10 years. I am in favor of a temporary moratorium that prohibits the development of new subdivisions in Ascension Parish. I am in favor of this temporary moratorium because the current traffic infrastructure does not support the current population of Ascension Parish. Also, 
the temporary moratorium should be instated and remain in place until the state and the parish provide the required traffic infrastructure to support the current population in Ascension Parish. We, the taxpayers of Ascension Parish, would have not received a fair compensation for our taxes. As an example of not receiving fair compensation for our taxes, I would like to bring your attention to the recently approved changes on Highway 73 near Interstate 10. And this also goes to Passionate Paul. The recent past, in the recent past, the Strategic Planning Committee has approved two significant changes on Highway 73 near Interstate 10. One is the large subdivision that, that has more than 100 homes that you've already heard of. The second is a new school to be built in the same area on Highway 73 at Interstate 10. Both of these significant changes were presented to the Strategic Planning Committee as having no adverse impact. To my disbelief, the Planning Committee agreed. I am certain that if any member of this committee traveled down Highway 73 between the hours of 6.30 a.m. and 8 a.m., they would very quickly learn the truth about the term no adverse impact. This area of 73 becomes a virtual parking lot during this time and with two new significant changes approved for this area, Highway 73, the traffic conditions will become far worse. As a citizen of Ascension Parish, I am asking my representative to vote for a temporary moratorium to stop the development of future subdivisions in Ascension Parish before our citizens begin to flee this parish, like I did previously from East Baton Rouge Parish. I am also asking that other Ascension Parish taxpayers and voters stand up and demand that this commission not rubber stamp changes to our parish based on false statements, like no adverse impact. I'd like to thank you for this opportunity to speak. Um, thank you, Troy, and thank you for not outing me as your councilman. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mrs. Karen, I think I slaughtered it the first time, Treachel, when, when your husband Kyle sp spoke just momentarily ago. Yeah, how, how do you? Treachel. Treachel? Treachel. Okay, if you say so, thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize, it's just not sinking in tonight. It's quite all right. I want to thank so many people for their very well-considered comments, their suggestions for how to proceed. This may fall into a different category. Um, thank you for your time tonight. I am not like my husband, a product of Ascension. And while this may make some of you feel that I have no right to an opinion on all this, I can tell you what I see as an outsider. As a person who has raised their kids in a neighborhood that I carefully chose and bought into and has been on the other side of these issues, I've lived with the consequences. The days of your, our kids playing in the yard with their schoolmates may be over because our neighborhood schools are under attack. I listen to my neighbors and I read the articles and the schools that we had good cause to be proud of just a few years ago are becoming nightmarish. We have three children to a desk. We have children sharing chairs. We have children sitting on the floor. School buses and school bus routes are growing more dangerous every day. And what will happen when our schools are no longer a draw to the home buyers? They'll send their children to private schools, the cost of which must then be considered part of the price of these shiny new homes. They won't seem so cheap when tuition and additional commute time are considered. And our neighborhoods will be just more road to drive through to get to their houses. Our children won't play together because they won't know each other from school. And what about the people who are stuck along the sides of these roads? People who can't sell the 40-year-old brick rancher for enough money to get their kids to another school district because the new home volume and builder incentives make it easier to buy new. 
some will walk away from the neighborhoods they grew up in, move in with family members in other areas, and let those homes rot. We've seen this all over the country, and it can happen here. Development isolating communities instead of integrating them, dividing them instead of improving them. I feel we must demand a moratorium on building and a firm commitment on the use of these impact fees. The parish's lack of foresight is in real danger of creating a rural slum, a crime-ridden wasteland of empty homes and substandard services. We're seeking the moratorium on new building permits until our infrastructure problems have been addressed, until the bulldozers start rolling on public works projects that will relieve these problems, they should not be rolling through our front yards to add to our burdens. <coughs> the monies that are being collected from these builders in impact fees, and I've heard in the case of the subdivision going up next door to us, they were volunteered. They should start showing up in our schools and on our roads before another plat is rubber stamped by the increasingly misnamed planning committee. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you, ma'am. I hold in my hand the last speaker, which for some of us may be the, the most favorite, which is the last. But last but not least, Miss, is it Linda Ezenak? While, while Ms. Ezenak's coming up here in the sidebar, Councilman Joseph just indicated it's his favorite speaker. <laughs> hey, if we can't laugh about things, we're all going to cry, huh? This is true. This is true. Welcome, Ms. Ezenak. Thank you. Um, I'm not quite sure where I want to start. So many people have addressed exactly what I wanted to talk about, so y'all just going to have to kind of listen to it again. Maybe I'll put it in a different perspective. Those of y'all who uh, are wondering about the traffic impact studies, that was actually addressed last June 2015. And there is um, a presentation that was presented and by Bob Horner that explains the impact studies. And I think Bob Satterley was really upset over the way that uh, he understood that it was done. So to start off, it's been said that we need more taxpayers. And I would like to know just how many more taxpayers do we need in this parish before we get our roads, sanitation, and flooding problems fixed, bringing more taxpayers into this area. All it does is bring more issues that we have to solve. It does not solve any of the problems we currently have. A meeting on February the 2nd on Parker Road was discussed because the line of the traffic with parents picking up children was a quarter mile down the road. People had trouble getting past the cars waiting for school to let out so they could pick up their kids. Now my question is, why wasn't this thought of before the school was built that people would be picking up their children? Well, it's because the school has too many children. The parish has grown that much in the amount of time since Parker uh, School was put there. There is also Henry Road and Highway 930, where Prairie Vale Middle School is. You cannot go down that street. A bus cannot, two buses cannot meet each other on that road. My truck cannot hardly meet another truck without almost going off the side of the road. You know, it, it's deplorable that they would put a school, and it's been there for, what, 50 years? And no one's looked at that road to address it with the um, people that we have coming into the parish. The parish asked for a road tax, but we have $150 million as of September of last year. Why are we not using this to address some of the issues with our roads? The council has expressed, or the PNZ expressed at least two recent occasions that the parish had requested additional review and testing of a road and sewer system to verify proper installation before the subdivision could be placed under bond. 
and therefore accepted into the parish road system. On some occasions, it was expressed they had difficulty enforcing the assurance of proper installation. Once the bond is expired and the system is accepted, the parish takes ownership for any maintenance and repairs, which could be costly to the parish. In 2014, there were 16 violations. In 2015, there were 17 violations. This is money that is costing the parish. It has been suggested that the parish should not have to request such tests, that they should have the authority to mandate them at their direction. So why don't they have this authority? This is an issue I see needs to be addressed. The parish should be able to mandate traffic analysis. Ms. Esnick, we're going to have to ask it's you to sum time. up here. And I'm not even halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love was, to let you go I longer, but my, my put, colleagues will hang me. And, <laughs> we will. And you folks may not get what you wish tonight. <laughs> well, I try. Do you have a summary statement? We just. Uh, well, as you can see, I, I do not think six months is enough. I think you need to go as long as you can to get these issues settled. The uh, councilman, the PNZ, all need to get together, the parish president. These issues need to be settled. And, and you know, our sanitation, our drainage, it's all in a mess. Okay. And all I can see is it's just gone. But I am in favor of a moratorium. Thank, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank all the speakers. Uh, do we have another speaker? I know the gentleman, so before he hands it in to save time, it's Mr. Billy Aguillard, a developer in our community. My name is Billy Aguillard, 1542 Airline Highway, Prairieville. And uh, that is actually my office address. However, I do not own any properties in East Baton Rouge Parish. The only residence I own is in Mississippi. So my office address is what I use as my physical address for the state of Louisiana. I'm on the traffic impact subcommittee it was originally started as a impact fee subcommittee to study impact fees after the first two or three meetings it was decided that at that time the only taxes that we collected was a transportation tax so we altered the committee to be a traffic impact fee study committee which is what we studied I have been to every meeting except for one in the last two years at one time we suspended meetings for about six months the actual final draft of the impact fee ordinance is done. It will be presented to the Finance Committee probably at the next meeting. <coughs> I think from there it's going to go to uh, maybe for the parish to review, for there back to, and after that back to the council for approval. And besides what some other people have stated about me, I've never stated my position on impact fees in Ascension Parish. What I have said was I would not support impact fees unless it was done fair, equitable, and there were no waivers for anyone. However, the only waiver that I suggested we do was for the schools. But I don't feel that a school should pay a tax with a tax. And you can say impact fees are fees, but when you give the government money, it's a tax. I don't care what you say. I was overruled on that, and now schools will have to pay an impact fee also. And as far as, as schools go, our schools, our libraries, the only organization in Ascension Parish that has surpluses is the school board, the libraries, and the drainage <coughs> department. And the school board is fixing to do a $100 million bond issue to build new schools. And they say they don't need any new taxes to pay for it because they already have the existing taxes. If you look at the tax structure for Ascension Parish, look at what the school board gets. They get over 60% of the property taxes. They get over 50% of the sales taxes. They get more taxes than anybody else. And that's one of the reasons we have some of the best schools in the state of Louisiana is because of that. I will say this tonight. I've been on the traffic impact fee committee since its inception. I'm for impact fees, again, if it's done correctly if it's done fair and equitable with no waivers. Thank you for your time. Thank you, um, Billy. Um, I, I feel compelled for the record to uh, 
ask Mr. O'Neill, Parenting Legal Counsel, this evening. Mr. Yagyad stated that the that the um, impact fee um, is is a tax. Is a tax. Is that correct, Mr. Parenting? Legally, it's not a tax. Could you please explain to everyone what it is? It's a call, It's a fee to pay for the uh, impact that you're adding to the system. It's not a tax. The courts have ruled that it's not a tax. It's a fee. Okay, and, and that's just for the record. I'm not trying to pick on the last speaker per se. Um, be, before we let the, the um, uh, well, first of all, are, are there any more um, comments before we close the public comment period? Yes, sir. Have you, have you signed with the secretary, sir? He's oh, you've already spoke. It's Troy. Uh, th that's just, I'm sorry, it's just not allowed. Um, if we give you a second round, everybody else is going to want it. And uh, I'm sure Mr. Aguilar would want another turn as well. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 uh, or at least I think so. So I, I'm sorry, I, I just can't do that. Um, so any, any new speakers yet that haven't uh, <laughs> filled out a card that would like to speak? It's one of these things, ladies and gentlemen, speak now, forever hold your peace. A lot of people have called me, uh, there we go, it's a brave soul, have called me and I've told them, you know, this is a lot of like gaining weight. An ounce on the lip, a century on the hips, you know, a second on the lip, misspoke. <laughs> I've been informed by one of my colleagues, basketball game starts at eight, so we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna try to wrap this up. Sir, w w what is your name, please? Um. My name is Jameson Shove. I'm a developer and builder in uh, Central Parish. My office is on Airline Highway, uh, right near Highway 73 intersection. And, uh, you know, I understand the concerns of the council. Uh, the, the thing that concerns me is, you know, we have a lot of folks that are developers and builders, and this is their livelihood. Um, while the traffic impact fees may be important, I don't think it's a moratorium as a necessity. Um, you know, we have several projects that are in process right now. What happens to the money that we've spent and the timelines we have to adhere to? Uh, is that being in, taken into consideration? Um, you know, the traffic impact fees only affect the new people coming into the resident, uh, to the parish. What happens to the existing residents? They get the, uh, the, the benefit of the, the new residents paying for all the roads. I think there's obviously uh, uh, other opportunities out there that can pay for these roads. I mean, everybody says the evil developer. What about the plants that hire all these new people? Uh, what, what, what tax do they have? What, uh, you know, what are their, what are their uh, there's no consequence for them. They just hire new people and the roads get jammed up with them. I, you know, the thing I'm concerned with is when does this moratorium take effect? Does it happen immediately? Does it happen two months from now, six months from now? It's six months break. I think, in fairness to the existing business owners, y'all need to take that into consideration. Uh, all of a sudden, two weeks from now, no more new developments. What happened to the? What happens to the projects that are currently in process? Um, you know, I think most of the traffic is issues in Ascension Parish are due to the fact that the interstate's so backed up. I mean, it's not Ascension Parish's fault. That's a federal responsibility. But yet, you know, y'all are going to mandate all this, uh, impose these fees on us as developers. The residential developer gets, seems to get the brunt of all the, all the, the, uh, the, uh, the problems with the parish. I just think it's unfair. And then a lot of these folks in here are complaining about flooding and things of that nature from last year. Last year was the uh, most rainfall we've had in this area in recorded history, but yet, you know, all of a sudden, it's the developer's fault that yeah, the, the one that blocked my ditch was the developer's fault. The one that blocked the canal that caused my uh, son, uh, son to get hurt. Uh, so excuse bad me. Was the developer's fault. Okay, uh, we, we we will have order. We we had 88 inches of rain, I think it was last year. Then you know, everything is the developer. Most of the projects that are coming online right now are, are that are just starting, or they're just starting. The the everybody says it's all these. The new development, the new development is just starting. The people aren't even in the houses yet, and then y'all blaming the traffic on these new developments that haven't even occurred yet. I just, I think the moratorium um, needs to be, if it takes effect, it needs Sir, to Sir, I'm going to give you a, another 20 seconds That's because fine. you were interrupted. Right. I think but, I, but I ask you to summarize, too. I, I am. I just think if you're going to do a moratorium, I think you need to give fair notice to the existing business owners 
that conduct business in this parish, employ lots of people, provide a tax base for new homes. Uh, you know, one subdivision might generate $300,000 in taxes a year for the parish, but nobody takes into consideration that either, not to mention Thank sales tax for construction materials and so forth. Thank you, Mr. Chauvin. And um, just one comment. I, I, I copied a note here. You were asking what happens to projects in uh, process. So, again, I'll, I'll refer to uh, Mr. Parenton to talk about how they will or will not be affected. Any subdivision that has preliminary approval of that plot will be allowed to go forward. Okay. And O'Neill, if you bear with me, and please correct me anywhere where I'm wrong, because I, I don't think the folks out there that, that may be in the audience or watching on Channel 21 um, have seen the, what the proposed audience looks like. So just highlights. My understanding, and I got this from in I chambers. Would, I think Mr. Mr. Dawson, I, I did it for him. Are we going to read it? Ago. Okay. Yeah. I think oh, you want to do it that way? But 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 what, before you do that, let me just let me make these remarks so that people understand. My understanding, planning director, 20 or greater since the wording you're going to hear in a minute is new major subdivisions, okay, that's the definition of a new major subdivision. So therefore, it wouldn't affect Director um, Compton family petitions. Um, it would also not affect commercial development. This is on residential. It's on the, um, I think at this point, both the East and West Bank, although we may be discussing that to see if, if, there, if there's uh, any will, I can see by Mr. Joseph that maybe we would want to exclude the West Bank. Um, and uh, the only other thing that I would add is that as, as uh, Chairman Kluot has asked me not to place whatever happens here tonight uh, um, on the next PC, a parish council agenda, because that's tomorrow night, because we're all going to a police jury meeting beginning Thursday, won't be back to the following Monday, and that's less than 24 hours, and so I've made that promise. So any motions that come from this committee tonight, I would... I uh, charge my committee members with, with in, you know, talking about not the very next meeting, but the, the meeting after that. Uh, Mr. Parenton, you, you're going to read this, or Bill? Um, sorry, Mr. Dawson. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that the Strategic Planning Committee recommend to the Ascension Parish Council that an ordinance with the same effect as the one below be considered for adoption with the title or ordinance to impose temporary moratorium on major subdivisions. Whereas Ascension Parish has experienced large population growth over the past few decades, and the public services in our parish has not been able to expand at the same rate as the population growth. And whereas there is a need to consider the possibility of charging subdivision developers in Ascension Parish impact fees to pay for infrastructure improvements and whereas to allow time for the governing authority of Ascension to consider all aspects of the impact fees and to consider modifications to the parish codes, there is a need to temporarily stop the process of approving new major subdivisions in the unincorporated portions of Ascension <laughs> Parish. Therefore, be it ordained by the Ascension Parish governing authority that, as of the effective date of this act and through either a six-month period from this effective date or as of the date which the governing authority of Ascension adopts development impact fees, only if that date is sooner, imposes a moratorium on the acceptance, approval, and completion of pre-applications for major subdivisions and the approval of any preliminary plat for major subdivisions. The intended effect of this ordinance is to impose, I'm sorry, I left that, let me uh, correct this last sentence, approval and completion of pre-applications for major subdivisions and the approval of any preliminary plats in the unincorporated areas of the East Bank of Ascension Parish. The atten intended effect of this ordinance is to impose a moratorium on major subdivision approvals in the parish for at most a, a six-month period in order to consider impact fees and to make necessary changes to the planning and zoning code. It is not intended to affect development in the municipalities in Ascension Parish, <coughs> parentheses, City of Gonzales, City of Donaldsonville, and Town of Sorrento. Thank you, Mr. Dawson. Do I have a second to the motion? I second that. It's been moved by Mr. Dawson, second um, by Mr. Lawler. Uh, to, without restating it, what, what he just said, <laughs> uh, as far as the what, what the ordinance would look like. Um, 
before we have discussion on that in a vote, um, I would like to also recognize and ask, uh, and I apologize, we should have stuck this in earlier, Mr. Ricky Compton, our planning director, is with us tonight. I asked him to be here. Uh, Ricky, I did not respect that maybe you would want to say something um, about anything that the public or the developers had to say, or you could uh, decide not to. Uh, Mr. Compton has in let the record show indicated he's, he's happy. And, and while I'm at it, um, th thank you, Mr. Um, Dawson. Uh, and this isn't Bill, this is Ken Dawson sitting up there in the front row <laughs> for approving Ricky being here tonight. I, I think, Ricky, that means you're going to get overtime pay or something. I don't know. All right, so again, folks, it, we, need, we need to laugh a little bit here, but this is a very serious, obvious, serious matter, and I'm sure I'll, I'll get some complaints tomorrow. Um, so the floor is open to discussion. Now, how I want to handle this, I have no idea if this committee is going to be all together on this tonight, but this is called Robert's Rules of Order. And it's been adopted by the parish council in our bylaws, so we're going to strictly adhere to it. And what it says is that what you need to do when someone makes a motion and someone seconds it is you immediately recognize the person who made the motion and let him speak first. It's his privilege now. And say why he believes we should, in this case, Mr. Dawson, have the moratorium. I will then ask, is anybody um, interested in speaking in opposition? If there's such a speaker on this committee, we will listen to that person. Then I'll say if someone wants to um, uh, support the, the original, we'll, we'll do that. We'll yin-yang back and forth. And I might add, in Robert's Rules of Order, it's been said before, I'm not sure it's sunk in yet. A second does not mean that that individual, in this case Mr. Lawler, even agrees. It just means he wants to hear, at this point, further discussion. So we'll respect that. If it need be, uh, need be, if the need be that we have more than one round, then I will allow a second round. Due to late hour, after the second round, we'll close it down and bring it to a vote. Fair enough? So with that, Mr. Dawson, tell us why you want the moratorium. Well, I'm not going to repeat myself. I think the whereas covered this, and, and I think I want to thank all the uh, speakers tonight. I know it's, uh, it's hard to leave your families and your jobs and all these things to come up here and, and speak, and, and we really appreciate you guys making that effort. But... Uh, I think the three whereas that we covered in the beginning and, and all your comments, you know, are the, are the reason that we're asking for this. Let's uh, use it a second. You done? I'm okay. done. Thank you. Um, does anybody wish to speak against the moratorium? I have a question for clarification. Chair recognizes uh, Councilman Benny Johnson. Mr. Farrington. Yes, sir. As I understand, the moratorium doesn't have any effect on the West Bank or that any particular the, proposal. The, that was the proposal, not to have any impact so on the So from a legal Bank. standpoint of view, if the impact fees are going to be passed parish-wide, does that have any in, any issue with putting the moratorium just on the east side? Or? No, because the impact fees would be parish-wide. Well, that's you, my it's question. It's just the moratorium doing on this, development at this time. That's my question. If we're doing a uh, moratorium on the east bank, but yet we're talking about this doing it for the... Uh, resolution in, of impact fees, and impact fees are going to be parish-wide, then therefore should the moratorium not be parish-wide? That's up to the parish council. From a legal standpoint. Issue. <laughs> okay, just quick. That'll work. Uh, okay, two things. From what I heard, that's not speaking in opposition. He was just asking for clarification, and I believe that's probably what uh, Councilman Joseph is looking to do now. That's correct. <laughs> Chair recognizes Oliver Joseph. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, regards to... Uh, Councilman Johnson, uh, I agree on the proposed ordinance, and just for say for impact fee, uh, I, if it comes to effect, the West Bank is definitely in line with the impact fee. The only reason why uh, oppose, I mean, uh, the West Bank being on the moratorium, because since 1973, a subdivision haven't been built on the West Bank. So we've been in a moratorium for the last something years. Okay? I mean, you know, I love to have this, you know, not all your problem, but some of them. Okay? But as far as this moratorium, I mean, for the East Bank, I definitely understand it. And for the West Bank, I hope you understand the situation we're in. I'm looking for houses on my side of the river. But as far as impact fee, hey, they come with the territory. We pass it. They pay too. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you, Mr. Joseph. Okay, so 
we're back to the, the, the yin yang point where is anybody in this committee wish to speak against the moratorium? Okay, at that point then we'll go to our second, Mr. Aaron Lawler. Uh, first of all, thank everyone that came tonight, whether you spoke, whether you didn't speak, I appreciate you taking the time to be here. Uh, whether to air your concerns or just to show your faces, it means a lot. It means a lot to have our citizens come and tell us how they feel. Um, you know, I, I think there's been some miscommunication about the moratorium because I've talked to people about this. As it's been said, this is not a cessation. This is not a termination of any commercial growth in any way, shape, or form. We still encourage commercial growth. This is a temporary fix. This is a short-term sacrifice to allow us to consider impact fees. It's a short-term sacrifice for a long-term problem. And for too long, we've put off our long-term problems, which have grown and grown. And this is an opportunity to take a little time. Let's talk about impact fees, because that's what this is about. This is a moratorium to talk about impact fees. That's what we need to do. We've studied it for two years, and we've gone nowhere. Uh, this is an important issue right now. Uh, I want to thank everybody also for not discussing impact fees right now. That's not what this is about. This is about the moratorium. Now, I have heard some concerns uh, from the home builders. Um, I understand, uh, I was told today that the Capital Area uh, Home Builders Association put out a flyer. If anybody has that, I'd love to see it um, regarding this meeting. I haven't seen it yet, but I heard there were concerns about the plants hiring. We don't want our plants to stop hiring. That's what brings people here. We want continued growth in the parish. We want continued residential growth in the parish. But we want to do it the right way. And what we're asking for is the time to consider how we can do it the right way. We can use impact fees to control the growth. We're asking for time. That's all it is. This is a short-term solution to a long-term problem. Thank you. OK. Uh do we have anybody else, that, there's no Yang, that wants to speak further in support of the moratorium this evening? Does that mean I'm a Yang? <laughs> I'll let the record show Congressman Lola wants to know if he's a Yang. Uh, I don't even know how to respond. Um, folks, this is the bane of modern day society. We all know it's the smartphone. I'm not advertising, by the way, for Apple or anything, so let me keep it on this side. Uh, it's been buzzing in my pocket almost nonstop since I've been sitting up here. I thought maybe I need to give it my cardiologist and see if we're going to go with that pacemaker or not. So mm -hmm. I'd be remiss not to say, many people are asking me, every speaker tonight, and I did not realize this in the interest of fairness, said who they are, where they lived. I'm being asked, the second speaker, I believe that's uh, you, Mr. Chauvin, are you still in the room? If you would state for the record, where do you live and are you in Ascension? So you do business in Ascension Parish and you live in Baton Rouge. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right. Without uh, further ado, um, any further discussion? Chair recognizes. Um, no, no, no. Are you, are you calling? Well, I don't think we need to do that. No. <laughs> Let's not have two votes. Uh, any further comments on the moratorium? All right. Our discussion is closed. We, it's been moved by Councilman Bill Dawson and second by Councilman Aaron Lawler that we recommend, and I want to emphasize that, folks, it's not over with here. This is just a recommendation. He didn't say that in his motion, but to, and he knows it, to the full council. And it will, re it will require more than just this committee by vote. That means that if you feel as strong as you do, both the public and the developers who spoke this evening, I highly recommend you come to that meeting. And I would also say as a, there's no such thing as a friendly addition to a motion, but I think, Bill, you would respect Randy Kluat's wish not to consider this tomorrow, but this would come to the full council by our next meeting, which would be... You couldn't do it anyway. The public, the public open meetings law would wouldn't allow it to be correct. posted 24 so that, hours right, So that's and understood. And it, it's, uh, it'll be down the line, but so the public can get an idea what, if they want to plan to come to that next meeting. And uh, that would... Mr. Chair, Mr. Chairman, you can sp you can come up to the mic and speak. And I'll ask you to come to the mic. Uh, John Conley said so we can hear what you're saying. Yes, one or holler loud, sir. I don't have a problem speaking loud. I just want a clarification from you that this is taking place tonight. It's not in anywhere enough time to put on the ordinance. No, 
Absolutely. I think that's what Mr. Parrotton just said. Correct. Absolutely, sir. Right. Absolutely, sir, and, and, I, and I concur totally with that. And that was my promise to you when you called me that we, we, we wouldn't do that. And I think, as O'Neill said, we can't anyway. It's a public one more time. The, the, the next step at the, at the council would only be an introduction. Right. So that's not a public hearing. Yes, everybody understand that, too. Be, it would not be for the vote then. It would have to be. This is an ordinance, okay? Bill called it a resolution, but it's an ordinance. So it's going to have to be introduced. Y'all know the process? <laughs> Okay, and, and then after that, it's going to come back to us, and the ordinance has to be read, and we have to have a public comment period, and so forth and so on. So all I can say is just kind of watch the newspapers, watch the website. We'll tell you when it is you can come back. And call me, but sparingly, uh, on, on the dates. All right. Um, are we totally clear? And thank you, Mr. Parrington, and thank you, uh, Mr. Kluot. Is there any further discussion? Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we adopt the... Um, um, recommendation of a moratorium as written, as read, and probably somewhat written by uh, Councilman Dawson. Um, are there any objections? Not hearing any, and before that happens, I would like Madam Secretary to register myself as a vote for it as well, so that it comes out of committee five to zero. Okay. Motion carries. Okay, uh, <laughs> last item is uh, entertain mo a motion. Move to, mo mo move to the meeting and adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> it's been moved. We adjourned by Councilman Joseph. Second, second by Mr. Lawler. We are adjourned. <laughs>